In today's Excel VBA tutorial, we're going to take a look at using the find method. This is the same thing as doing control F in Excel or going to home, find and select. You've probably noticed that when you use the find dialog box and you search for something, Excel finds your value really fast. It's almost instant. That's why using the find method can be considerably faster than looping through many cells in VBA. Let's see the arguments that we need for this method. First off, it's expression.find. And here on the Microsoft website, it says that the expression is a variable that represents a range object. So you can use the find method on a range. Now this can be all the cells in your worksheet if you do cells.find, or you can restrict it to a specific range. The only argument here that's required is what you're looking for. You can see the rest are optional. But even though a lot of these are optional, I do recommend that you set some of them. Now let me explain why. For example, the look-in argument decides where you're looking for your variable, if you're looking for them in formulas, values, and comments. Now, formulas and values are very similar, except that formulas look inside values, but they also look inside the formula text to look for the value that you're looking for. Notes is the same as Excel comments, and that's basically the comments inside your Excel worksheet. The reason setting this is important is that if you don't set it, the default reverts to what you had selected last. So imagine this, you had opened your Excel spreadsheet and you were looking for a specific comment and you use the normal Excel find dialog box and you change that dropdown to comments. Later, you wrote your VBA code and you didn't specify what it should pick under look in. You just left out this argument. It's still gonna look inside the comments. So even if you just want to look inside the values or formulas, it's going to look inside the comment because that was the last setting that you had. Same logic applies to look at. This one decides if you want to look for a full match or a partial match. And again, if you don't set this specifically in your code, it goes back to the setting that you had last. Another useful one is match case. So if you're ever looking for a case sensitive match, you can set this to true. The default of this one is false. Another one that comes in handy if you're looking for many matches is the after argument. And that's something that we're going to take a look at in the next lecture. In this lecture, we're going to take a look at the simple version of find and just look for one match. But before we switch to our Excel workbook, let's just think what type of variable we need to save the finding in. That variable is a range object. Okay, so we need to use the set keyword when we use the find method. Now let's switch to Excel and solve for this problem. Here what we need to do is to find the article code for this entity. This entity here is basically a company ID from here. So we have our drop down, we select a company from this list, and when we click on this button one match, it should give us the article code that's associated with this. Okay, in the next lecture, we're going to take a look at the many matches because as you can see, some of these have multiple instances and they have different article codes. Okay, but let's start simple now. Let's bring up the Visual Basic Editor and see how we can set this up. So Alt F11. I've already created a new module to practice find here and created a new sub procedure for this example. Okay, let me collapse this so that we can zoom in better. As a first step, let's create the variable that we need to keep the result of the find function. So I'm going to dim comp ID as range. Now, because this is a range, we need to use the set statement. So comp ID equals first was expression dot find, and that expression was a range, right? So I could do cells dot find if I didn't know where that comp ID was. Like if I didn't know, for example, if it was in column A, if it could be anywhere, I could just do cells.find. Or in this case, I know that it must be somewhere in column A. So I'm going to restrict it to column A. You can, of course, be more specific and also restrict it to like A7, in this case, to A20. 
but I'll just go with the column A here. Dot find. Now let's fill up the arguments. You have the option of using the comma to skip some arguments and just jump to the arguments that you want to fill, or you can specifically define them here. Then you don't need to worry about the orders. In this case, I'm going to specifically define each one. Where is our value that we're looking for? It's in range B3, right? So it's B3.value. Next, let's specify the look in. I'm going to set that to Excel values. The look at should be Excel whole because I want to look for a perfect match. Close bracket. Let's just see what we get here by adding this to the watch window and just pressing a fade on this code. Okay, I see the value associated with this and it must be showing this cell. So I can double check by changing the property of this to address and that's A8, right? So it actually jumped to A8. I'm not interested in getting A8 back here, but I'm interested in getting E8 back here. So what I can do is to offset the location of this, of A8, by four columns. I'm going to be writing that result in C3, right? So I can already say range C3.value equals comp ID dot offset. How many rows do I want to offset? Nothing. How many columns? Four. And I want to get the value of that. Okay, so let's just play this and I get 120 and that's the right one. What happens if I look for something that doesn't exist? What do I get back? So I think I put an entity here. It's this one that doesn't exist on this list. Okay, let's do F8 on this. It runs into a problem with the address. Let's take a look at the value of this. I'm just going to delete that. Its value is nothing. That's why it runs into a problem because I've defined it as range, but it's giving back nothing, which is not applicable for this object type. So I need to make an exception using the if statement. If not comp ID is nothing, then it should do this. Otherwise, so else it can give a message saying company not found. Okay, and end if. In VBA, the not keyword is used quite often because it's much easier to say what something isn't than what something is. And in this specific case, we know that it's either nothing or it can be different ranges. So it's very practical to say if it's not nothing, then give us the value. Otherwise, give us a message that the company isn't found. Let's test this. Company not found. It looks like it's working. I'm just quickly going to assign the macro to this button. And let's just run some tests here. Let's pick the DE company, which is right here and I get 107. Okay, now if I pick this PL1, I get company not found, but it still keeps the value of the previous one. So what I should actually do is to clear the contents of this before I run the macro. Okay, so now it's good, it deletes that. If I select something else, it finds that. In case you'd like to find out more, or you'd like to learn VBA in a structured way, check out my complete Excel VBA and Macros course. You're going to find the link below this video. You're also going to find it in the cards provided, or just go directly to xelplus.com courses. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.